Hey guys, what's up? It's Barrett. And today I have a Merlin. Yeah, Merlin. Seagull Merlin. So here's the Merlin. It is a Seagull M4 and it is the spruce, the spruce one. All right, let's open this thing up. All right, cool case. Could have just used this as a case, huh? Awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Actually, this is actually a Christmas present from Dad, so appreciate it, Dad. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. It's got some pretty nice action. It is a dulcimer, so dulcimers are supposed to have higher action than, you know, a guitar or, or so. I really can't say too much about dulcimers because I really don't know that much about dulcimers. <clears throat> but uh, it comes with a cool little, little handbook. One cool thing about this little book that it comes with, it actually does have a couple little cute little tunes um, you can play. So that, that's nice. So the tuning is D, A, D. So you have one string here, D, A, and then D. So your higher D. So low D, A, high D, which in music terms, that would be a fifth plus the octave, which I'm gonna make that an octave in a minute. So one really cool thing about this instrument, the Merlin, is that it's something called diatonic. Now what that really means in musical terms is diatonic is just when um, every single note works well together and it's in a key or a scale. Now since it's tuned in D, A, D, that's all going to be in the key of D. In this case, the instrument is literally fretted to D major because D major would be whole step whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now if you're ready to play this instrument, what you're going to do is you're going to put your finger at the very end of the fret. Because if you do the middle of the fret, it's not going to sound as good. And if you do the back of the fret, you don't ever play the back of a fret on a string instrument. It doesn't work well. So you just want to play at the very kind of top end of the fret. And you can practice doing that on every single string. And practice just getting a nice tone from every single string. Yeah, very nice. You can hear the, the tone. Doesn't get thinner as you go up, so that's really nice. Now, the beautiful thing about this diatonicness is the fact that you can move your finger anywhere and you'll be in the key of D major. So this would be an E right here. F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then back to D. Now I'm talking about notes. Now if you do these two on top, these would be like what we call a drone note because they're not changing with a chord per se. It's just that you're keeping the harmony, the foundation of the harmony on the bottom while you're moving your melody on top. That's why if you ever want to play Merlin, all you have to do is just move your finger around on any of these frets. Now with that being said, some stuff you can practice is like slides. You can practice sliding from one thing to the next. So you slide by putting pressure on one fret, then applying the pick and then sliding to the next fret. And the difference is you keep the pressure going while you move versus playing, pressure, release, go to the next fret, pressure. It's a difference in articulation. So, let's play some chords. So here's just some basic first chords to kind of play around with. Uh, you have open, open, open for D, or you can have open, open two for D. 
Tori can have. Open, open. Last fret. Seven. So all those are Ds. Because <laughs> the instrument's tuned in D. Just like guitars tune in E. That's why there's lots of E's on guitar. Then you can get G by doing open, first fret, third fret, which I recommend using your first finger on the first fret and your pinky on the third fret because that third finger is going to be hard and awkward. So that's why one good thing when you're just starting this instrument is just practice just playing your different frets with your fingers. It's a little bit awkward because of how the frets are, but you kind of get the hang of it. I haven't got the hang of it yet. <laughs> but open, first, third fret. That's a G chord. So then you can just practice going back and forth between D and G. Now you can actually move that shape up and get a really pretty chord. I like that. Go back down to the G. One thing you want to remember when you're playing a string instrument is you don't have to always know the names of everything. Sometimes you can just take a shape that you've already learned and move it around. That's a really powerful thing to do. Just like that thing we just learned, this D chord here, really you can just take this finger and move it all around. We already talked about that. So in essence, that's kind of the same thing, but you take any shape on this instrument especially and move it around and you have all kinds of different chords. So shape as in this fret to this fret. So down a string over uh, two frets. Move that anywhere. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah, oh man. So that's a perfect way to end a piece right there. So that's a D chord and a G chord. You can do an A chord by doing first fret, open, first fret. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, some people might use the first finger. You could do that. So first finger, first fret, open, second finger maybe. That's kind of awkward for me. I don't really like that that much. I, like, I would use the second finger, first fret, kind of like you're doing a G chord on guitar. Second finger, first fret, open, and then third finger, first fret. That gives you a type of A chord. So we have a D, a G chord, an A chord, and a D chord. <laughs> so that's a really good way to get started on this instrument. Um, and I mean, I actually didn't mean for this to turn into a lesson. This was actually supposed to just be an unboxing and uh, kind of a review of the instrument. But I mean, I love this instrument. It's a lot of fun to play. If it's the first instrument you've ever played before, it'll be a good one. It's a really good instrument. It's kind of like ukulele in that it's a really good instrument for a first timer. Um, but even if you're a guitarist or a bassist and you just want uh, kind of an instrument to play around with, honestly, this is a cool one. So thanks for watching guys. This is the Seagull Merlin M4 Spruce. And if you want, you know, me to do more video tutorials on the Merlin or whatever, just uh, let me know. I'll see you on the next one.